Anxiety sucks. Seriously, if you've dealt with it, you know that it's horrible. And a vast majority of people that I talk to suffer from anxiety, whether it's on a small scale or a large scale. So you might be watching this video because you're looking for a solution to anxiety, or you're trying to understand why you flat out feel better and less anxious when you're practicing intermittent fasting. We're gonna dive into the physiology of this and really get a clear understanding of what's going on and why your anxiety levels go down so much when you fast. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and a bunch the rest of the week as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I post a new video or go live. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's dive right into this. I'm gonna cover this from two different sides. I wanna cover an overall somewhat subjective study because anxiety can be pretty subjective to begin with. I'll talk about that in a second. And then I'm gonna go deep into the inflammation world and talk about a physiological response that could be the solid core to why we suffer from anxiety. So the problem with anxiety is it is somewhat subjective. Okay, we know that there are certain things that trigger anxiety, right? Like we deal with a, a tilted glutamate scale where we have too much glutamate in our brain and not enough GABA, so we're anxious and we're constantly go, 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 go. We know that there's different triggers. We know that there's dopamine issues. Okay, we know these neurotransmitter responses, but we don't know which came first, like what's actually triggering this. And realistically, when you go to see a doctor and you get treated for anxiety, you get put on a benzodiazepam like Xanax or something like that, and all that does is basically just blunt those responses, it doesn't actually solve the issue. But when we look systemically, we can start finding some more things. But first things first, I wanna talk about one study that overall just found that as a rule, fasting decreased anxiety. This study was published in the Journal of Complementary and Integrative Medicine. So this particular study took a look at 48 people and they did 22 days of what's called Dawood fasting. Okay, Dawood fasting is where they were essentially fasting, not eating or drinking water between sunrise and sunset. They did this for 22 days, but every other day. So essentially 11 days of actual fasting. Now, mind you, this was essentially a form of intermittent fasting because they were only fasting from sunup to sundown, okay? Now, what they found at the end of the study was pretty darn interesting. They did find that subjects that were fasting had a decrease in overall anxiety symptoms and complained less of anxiety by about 4.37%. That doesn't sound like much, but quite honestly, for just a few days of this ultimately, that's a pretty significant reduction. Now there's a big glaring problem with this study. Okay, there's nothing clinical, nothing physiological. It was all based on questionnaire and based on habit and behavior. And you've probably seen my other videos where I actually kind of poo poo studies like that. The reality is this at least gives us a general view of things. And they did see a big increase in quality of life with these people. So there is a subjective note here, but it obviously tells us something good. But now let's forget that for a second. Let's move into something a little bit more concrete because I'm a data guy and I like physiology. Okay, inflammation, and I know you're getting bored right now because I'm talking about inflammation, but inflammation is quite honestly the core of this when it comes down to the physiology response. You see, one thing we have found is that there is a link with what is called interleukin-1 beta. Interleukin-1 beta is an inflammatory cytokine, okay? And it's directly correlated with anxiety, but Correlation does not equal causation. And some studies tried to take a deeper dive into this. Now, one thing that they did also find though, in general, is that people that suffer from metabolic conditions like diabetes or obesity, or just being overweight, or just having metabolic syndrome in general, most of the time suffered from anxiety. So there's sort of this comorbid relationship, this comorbidity with metabolic issues and anxiety. These conditions also have comorbidity with, of course, inflammation. So let's take a look at this study. This particular study was done on mice. Now, before you discredit me because this is a mouse study, I want you to understand something. A lot of times studies are done on mice because we can get a more profound response and see the way things work before translating this directly into a human clinical setting. So it's a natural first step, so don't hate on the study, but it's still really interesting results from a physiology standpoint. So the study found that interleukin-1 beta is generally regulated by something known as caspase-1. Okay, caspase-1 regulates a lot of different inflammatory cytokines within the body. So basically, if interleukin-1 beta is related to anxiety, then caspase-1 is going to be the director that would dictate whether interleukin-1 beta goes up or down. So this study took a look at mice that were doing 24-hour fasts. So what they found at the end of this study is that after 24 hours, mice ended up having a pretty significant reduction in caspase-1 activity. In fact, 35% reduction in the entire brain 
and 40% reduction specifically in the hypothalamus and 25% reduction in the prefrontal cortex. All very, very important when it comes down to that interleukin-1 beta, but overall anxiety. Now here's what's really wild. They found that those that fasted ended up having a 40% reduction in anxiety-like behaviors. Okay, so mice will register very OCD-type behaviors. Okay, they'll go do things and they'll repeat patterns and they'll show anxiety-like behavior or anxious behavior. 40% reduction in that just by doing a 24-hour fast. That's significant. But they also saw a 31% increase in their object location memory. So basically their ability to find an object. This is really, really important because we saw an improvement in anxiety symptoms but also saw better memory. Now, I don't know about you, but if I get anxious or I'm suffering from anxiety, my memory goes out the window. So we have a correlation there. Now here's where things get wild and where I get nerdy. There was no change in interleukin-1 beta, okay? That kind of contradicts what I was just talking about. So they saw that of course there was a decrease in caspase-1 which regulates interleukin-1 beta, but no change in interleukin-1 beta. So what it did is it told us, it found out that it was more about the signaling and what regulates inflammation than it was about the inflammation itself. That's really interesting stuff. So there's a direct correlation between being obese or being unhealthy and inflammation, but that inflammation isn't necessarily what triggers anxiety. It's the regulators of that inflammation. So it actually gets down more to the core. So the point is, is that fasting gets down to the core of what would actually heal an inflammatory response or would actually heal anxiety, potentially. Now, why is this happening? Okay, well, it probably has something to do with a reduction in what's called the inflammasome or a reduction of the activity of what's called the inflammasome, which is a series of proteins that trigger inflammation. Autophagy, which is the cellular recycling process that occurs when you're fasting, has a direct impact on the inflammasome, but also, when we're fasting, we have a big production of beta-hydroxybutyrate, the ketone bodies. So these ketones have a big effect on blunting the inflammasome. So that could very well be the case. Now we can also take a look at some of the other stuff that links anxiety and fasting and dive a little deeper. You see, studies have also shown that there's an increase in what's called brain-derived nootropic factor. Now, big increases. Those that fast see an increase on average between 50% and 400% in brain-derived nootropic factor. Now you're going, Thomas, I'm bored to death. What is BDNF? BDNF is brain fertilizer, literally, okay? That's a type of protein that actually grows new neurons and creates new synaptic clefts and new synaptic relationships. So new, new synapses, basically. Forms new bridges between neurons. Very, very key when it comes down to getting smarter, when it comes down to our memory, on our ability to cope. Okay, so that's a big increase there. Okay, now let's take it one step further. So there's a study that was published in the journal Neurology International. Okay, this was really interesting because this took a look at subjects that were fasting for Ramadan. Okay, so they were fasting for religious reasons, but they were fasting in an intermittent fashion. Okay, not long-term fasting. What they did is they measured a certain number of things, BDNF and serotonin, at the beginning of the fast, 14 days into their intermittent fasting regimen, and 29 days into their intermittent fasting regimen. Well, they found some pretty interesting results. At 14 days in, there was a 14.7% increase in serotonin. That's what makes you feel good, okay? And then at 29 days in, there was a 43% increase in serotonin, okay? So 14 at 14 days and 43% increase in serotonin. That is a huge number. And serotonin is what really just makes us have that sense of well-being. Okay, so we have other neurological factors and neurotransmitter factors that are coming into play. That's a short-term fix that can actually help us out a lot. And then the BDNF comes in and actually crystallizes what that issue is. So if we have a positive change that's occurring because serotonin uptake is improved or we have more serotonin upregulation, okay, that's gonna help us in the short term. Then BDNF comes in and crystallizes that for long-term changes. So fasting can actually be a potential like, healer of anxiety. If you fast intermittently for periods of time, you will notice that your ability to cope with anxiety improves. And it's not just an ability to cope, it's a true ability to actually fix the issue. Whether it's deeply rooted in your subconscious or not, your inflammatory response, your neurochemical response is just not going to be as intense. So anyhow, I know you like these mental health videos because obviously it's a very important part to your lifestyle. So if you want to see more of them or you have specific types that you want to see, put them down in the comment section below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.